All right, it's Joe here, and today I'm going to talk about a really unique project that I decided to take on. It's been um, almost a year now that I've had this, so essentially, I love the sound of a tube amplifier, and always wanted to have a you know tube stereo. But I really love the convenience and quality and all that that comes from the world of digital uh, mastering and all that. So, of course, the convenience of having just be able to say, hey, play this song, rather than shuffling through possibly scratch, you know, phonographs and all that and scratch CDs, you know, why not embrace both worlds of having streaming sound and having a tube amplifier that is powered by the magical power of Alexa, who is the most annoying appliance that I have, which is also one of the more useful ones. So, of course, you say her name, she's going to wake up and possibly reply with something completely unrelated. And sometimes she figures out that you're not talking to her and she goes quietly asleep. So, anyway, so this was a very, very unique project because one of the big problems with the Alexa is that once you pair to a device or you plug it in, in this case, I have it hardwired. See? So, I've got power to it. And then I also have just the, 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 the uh, stereo jack out. And the problem is once you plug into it, it knows that something's plugged into it and it routes the sound to it. So the problem with tube amplifiers is that one, they're very inefficient. They have heaters that actually have actual heating elements. That's what makes them glow. And those heating elements uh, also have a lifespan. So you don't want a tube amplifier to be on all the time, but I want to be able to talk to the Echo Dot anytime I want. So if I want to say, you know, Alexa, what is the current temperature? Okay, let me try that again. Alexa, what is the current temperature? Right now in Lexington, it's 64 degrees Fahrenheit with clear skies. Ah, okay, anyway, so if you noticed, um, I actually kind of have it overdriven. So I have um, the, the stereo is obviously off, but it still can talk because what I did was that I put a relay in. So I have a little miniature, kind of a very crude amplifier. I don't need it to be high quality. I just need to be able to hear her so I can say things like this and communicate with her without the amplifier being on. In order to accomplish that, I had to do several things. One, I wanted the stereo to be um, controlled completely by by the Alexa. So in order to do that, and there she goes waking up again, I have to, you know, have some type of way of communicating to it. And I, there's probably a thousand ways to have done it, probably a hundred ways to have done it better. Uh, anyways, so uh, you can't really talk about her without her like, what? What'd you say? So anyways, so essentially what's happened is that you have to communicate with it in order to turn it on. So I took a TP-Link Wi-Fi ad adapter and then just hacked it to pieces, threw it in there, and that way everything is all stuffed into this box right here. It's actually right into this section this big. So I got the power supply for the Echo, I've got the TP-Link adapter, and the TP-Link adapter powers this board that I built that's got this little a crappy little amplifier in there. It also has a relay so it can switch the audio signal between that crappy amplifier and the actual stereo. So I can say, Alexa, stereo on. And you can hear the little relay click in there. And what's happening now is that now the Alexa sound is now going to go into the stereo. So, so I don't infringe on any copyright stuff, whatever, and get it banned in certain countries. Just bear with me. Alexa, play Canon and D. Canon and D by Lullaby Renditions of Classic Children's Songs. Anyways. Alexa, play similar. All right, starting now. All right, whatever. Alexa, stop. So, as you can see, I mean, you can obviously play your favorite music, and that's not exactly my first choice of music, but whatever. It circumvents some copyright crap. I'm probably not going to get banned anymore on YouTube for that reason. So, there you go. So, that's the beauty of it is that and once I'm done with it, of course, you can see the see the, the night bright lights. In fact, you know what? Let's turn the lights off because that's what part of the magic of tube amplifiers 
is just that. So you can see the glow. That's one of the reasons why I wanted that grate. For one, so you could see the tubes, but also so people don't try putting their fingers in there because it's obviously glowing because it's incandescent. It's super hot. It's like touching a lit light bulb. Um, so, but you still can see it and it's nice and pretty. And once your eyes adjust to the darkness, it, it actually adds a, a nice faint glow to the room, which is very nice. So go ahead and turn the lights back. So, all right. So yeah, so I could say, Alexa, stereo off. Okay. And then she switched back through her crappy little solid state amplifier. But yeah, I mean, I don't really care. Like I said, if, if I want good quality sound, I'm just going to turn on the stereo. And it only takes a minute to warm up. But otherwise, I'll just, you know, if I just need to, as long as they can hear, understand her, it's all that matters. I mean, it would be nice if it was more clear, but whatever. That wasn't the point. So, on the back side, clipish or clipish or whatever you want to call it, I don't know. Decent quality speakers. And, well... If you kind of look in there, you can see all the electronic gizmos and all that, but they're pretty much hidden by the placement speakers. So, back like so, here. So, on the back side, this is aluminum. Uh, not aluminum actually, it is aluminum, but copper plated aluminum. It is bonded, so it does help shield it. If there was a short, you're not going to get electrocuted when you touch that. Same thing with all the other things in the metal. I try to bond everything so something shorts out to them. It doesn't become a safety hazard. And uh, it's a it's a dual um, output transformer. So I've got you know eight ohms and four ohms for the output. I also have here I've got a stereo um, stereo input uh, through uh, phono jack. So if I wanted to hook up an external device uh, like a turntable, I could. Also have uh, a volume control to help fine tune in the volume for your particular device. And I got a manual on and off switch. So if you are operating without internet or the Echo Dot or whatever, you're just plugging in your phone to the phono jack or whatever, uh, or the um, you know 3.5 millimeter uh, jack. You could just turn that switch and it will manually turn on the, uh, the tube amplifier. So if you wanted to use this with the absence of internet or the Echo Dot or something, you could still, you could still use it. So yeah, I got this on a, in my bedroom on a bookcase that just happens to be just ever so perfectly sized. I got just enough room to leave a little bit of a gap. I wish I had done something better than just a hole here, but it's, it's fine. I mean, once you kind of butt it up there, you don't really see it. and It, it actually works out pretty well. I could make a cover that goes over it if I want to be even fancier, but it's fine. I uh, hope uh, you enjoy this and hope this inspires you to do your uh, uh, tube amplifier because I've always been interested in the combination of the old and the new and I think this is an interesting way of, of, of creating something that takes the, the modernness of voice control functionality and streaming audio and combines it with an old school tube amplifier. And this tube amplifier, just to give a little background on this, I bought this as a kit. It's from China. It's Chinese-made tubes that are actually knockoffs of Soviet-era Russian tubes. But whatever, you know what? They actually sound really good. And I'm sure I could find some tubes that were, you know, a little bit better. But they're not going to be that much better. They're honestly very good quality. And what I'm seeing is it comes a kit. It literally was a schematic drawing, and part of it was in Chinese, and the other part um, was. You could figure it out. I mean, it was it was barely sufficient. If you're good with schematics, then you'll probably be just fine with it. It's definitely not for uh, the faint of heart or those who are not super comfortable reading, interpreting schematics. So yeah, I mean, it was a kit. Like it had everything, and I'll give it to them. It had everything I needed. It was very very complete. It was pretty quality. It was just though it was just like a bag of parts and the big components like the the metal chassis and all that and that was it i mean there was no extra anything no tips and tricks it was just there you go <laughs> anyway so i put it together and it's worked excellent and i'm happy it's solid hardwood i made it out of solid oak three quarter inch oak and i got some uh like i said the grate and all that I actually got from uh from slows uh, but you can also find the same things at homeless repo but it it's worked very well i'm i'm very happy with it and it's it's been a nice way to integrate the uh the echo dot into something that's uh kind of retro and 
and it has a very it has a, such a beautiful sound it just fills the room and it's not a great acoustics in here but it's just it just has such a beautiful sound to it really enjoy it so yeah i hope this inspires you hope this is uh um, you find this very interesting because i certainly found it uh, a very interesting uh way of uh doing this it, there's probably plenty of other ways i'm sure there's better ways of doing than the way i did it but you know what it's worked it's worked for almost a year now and haven't had any problems with it. I've just I hooked I've, since I've just hooked it up and all that. It's it's just worked flawlessly since. So if you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to comment. If you want to know more about how I did this, let me know.